Stereoscopic Systems, Part 1. Well, let's start with a bit of terminology. Uh, 3D animation refers to uh, computer animation that's generated with uh, programs that manipulate objects in a 3D space. Uh, this type of computer animation uh, normally uh, renders images in 2D. Uh, but the general public, when they think of 3D, they're thinking of 3D stereoscopic films. So to avoid uh, confusion with this terminology, uh, we'll use the term stereo 3D or stereoscopic 3D when we're referring to uh, movies with a stereoscopic uh, view. Now, stereoscopic vision uh, or stereopsis is the type of um, binoc binocular vision that we have with uh, our two eyes seeing a different uh, scene uh, due to parallax. So when we have, uh, say, a red object closer to us, a blue object farther away, uh, the two eyes see a slightly different uh, view. And uh, from those two different views, as we see in uh, these uh, images here, uh, from those, uh, from the differences of those two views, the brain can figure out that the red object in this case is closer and the blue object is farther away. Another effect that comes from uh, stereoscopic vision is that uh, one eye may see a different part of an object than the other eye. So in this example, the left eye only sees the front and the top of the cube. Uh, the right eye uh, sees uh, those two sides and around uh, to another side of the cube. So with those two different views, the brain uh, can judge uh, distance and depth. Now, so the first uh, stereoscope that allowed uh, us to see uh, 3D images from uh, 2D drawings uh, was uh, built in uh, 1838 by Charles Wheatstone, and it had kind of a complicated form using a pair of mirrors to project different images seen by uh, the left and right eye. Uh, a much simpler system was invented in uh, 1861, and it became quite popular because uh, photography was developed about that time, and so it became very easy to use a pair of cameras to create stereoscopic images. Uh, later, the uh, Viewmaster stereoscope basically uses the, the same principle, just in a, in a different design. Now, for uh, looking at stereoscopic images, say, on a screen or in a book, uh, a simpler system is the uh, system of anaglyph uh, color pairs. So uh, here you see a couple of examples of the typical uh, anaglyph glasses which are used for uh, stereo 3D. We have uh, the red cyan, uh, green magenta, and blue yellow. And you see that these are color additive color complement uh, pairs. Uh, here's a little video illustrating um, what these glasses are. Uh, what the view looks like through these glasses. So you see the mannequin is wearing the glasses and we put the red filter in front of the camera and then the blue filter. So watch her eyes and watch how um, you can see through in one case and then the other case. Uh, so here we have that when there's um, no filter we see she has cyan on one side, red on the other. Uh, when the camera is looking through the red filter, uh, the view through the cyan uh, filter is blocked. Uh, and then uh, vice versa, when the cyan filter is in front of the camera, uh, the view through the red filter is blocked and we see uh, through the cyan filter. Uh, here are the transmission curves for those two uh, filters. So you see that the uh, cyan colored filter uh, transmits 
light uh, through most of the spectrum, uh, except it does not transmit in the red part of the spectrum. And then the red colored filter is the opposite. It transmits very well in the red part of the spectrum and not um, very much at all anywhere else. Now, uh, another combination which is used is um, green magenta. And uh, it turns out that for a, a lot of displays like uh, television displays, just due to the spectrum of the individual LEDs, uh, this tends to give a better uh, stereoscopic result. So here are the transmission curves for magenta. Uh, magenta um, colored filter transmits everything except for the green uh, and the green transmits uh, primarily in the green part of the spectrum. Uh, finally, there's another uh, possible option, which is uh, blue yellow. Uh, those are also additive uh, complements. It's not as commonly used since uh, the, our vision in the blue part of the uh, spectrum is not as strong as in the uh, other parts of the spectrum. So when uh, we're creating a stereoscopic film, uh, you need to have a pair of cameras, one for each view for the left eye and the right eye. And um, so these cameras uh, record the scene. And this is, of course, very easy to do in computer animation. You can put as many cameras as you want and render uh, different images from different views. Uh, in live action, it's a bit more complicated. You do have to have a more complex uh, camera rig. Then with uh, projection, uh, the simple option is to take the film recorded by each camera and use dual projectors and display that, then uh, the audience wears the appropriate color ana anaglyph uh, glasses, and then they see um, with each eye what each camera was filming. Uh, the complication here is the projectors have to stay perfectly synchronized, so a uh, better system is to combine the uh, film from each camera into um, a single strip which can be um, projected by a single projector. Now these uh, images have a stereoscopic effect which means some of the elements in the scene appear to be inside of the screen and some of them appear to be outside of the screen. Uh, so the more dramatic uh, situation is when an object appears to uh, come out of the screen and into the theater space, and that's called negative parallax. So uh, in this image, uh, you find that uh, the paddle ball actually comes out of the screen towards the audience, and uh, in this case, the, the two images of the paddle ball, uh, which are seen by the left eye and the right eye are on opposite sides um, of the um, colors seen by uh, those two eyes. In other words, they, uh, they cross. Uh, further in the uh, background in this uh, image, we have, uh, say, the person standing in the back. Uh, they have a positive uh, parallax, so they appear to be inside the screen um, compared with the negative parallax of the paddle ball, which was outside of the screen. Now, the location of uh, zero parallax, uh, that distance from the cameras is called the convergence uh, distance. There's another important uh, distance in stereoscopic filming, which is the interaxial distance, which is the separation between the cameras, kind of like the separation between your distance between your eyes. Now the uh, convergence distance uh, is uh, either adjustable by changing the angle of, of toe-in of the cameras, uh, but a simpler adjustment is to do it uh, post-processing. And here's an example of that in the first image we have a rather extreme uh, parallax. Uh, you see that the um, green magenta um, 
images, everything is rather uh, far apart. In the next one, what we've done is taken the, uh, the green image and shifted it relative to the magenta image so that uh, the telephone is at screen depth or at zero parallax. Now we still have a 3D effect if you see the objects um, on the table, but it's not so excessive as uh, in the first one, which uh, if you try to have uh, too much parallax, the, uh, the images end up looking um, well, rather poor. Now another uh, adjustment, but this one uh, has to be uh, done uh, during filming, is fixing the interaxial distance. So that's the uh, horizontal separation between the cameras. Now, the when this interaxial distance is small, the objects in the scene uh, appear to be close to uh, screen depth. In fact, when the interaxial distance is zero, everything is at screen depth. The larger you make the interaxial distance, the greater the stereoscopic effect. So things um, with negative parallax uh, look farther from the screen, things with positive uh, parallax look deeper into the screen as you increase the interaxial distance. Now you don't want to do too much of this because there's another effect um, which is called retinal rivalry. So uh, each eye has a cone of vision and uh, when you have objects within that uh, cone of vision within that angle, uh, then the eye can comfortably uh, resolve that um, it, um, image. Something which is too far outside of the cone of vision into the peripheral vision, uh, we, don't, we don't see it clearly. Now, uh, in creating stereoscopic images, you want to have uh, everything in the scene uh, in this comfort zone, which is uh, the overlapping uh, cones of vision of the two eyes. In this example, this is a very poorly uh, constructed uh, 3D um, uh, film because uh, much of the screen is outside of the cone of vision of one eye or the other. So uh, we have objects which are in retinal rivalry, like um, this closest uh, sphere and this farthest uh, square are in the uncomfortable uh, zone and will not be seen uh, clearly by the viewer. Another uh, effect that has to be uh, considered is uh, so-called breaking the frame. And this occurs when we have an object with negative parallax, in other words, it's coming out of the screen. If that object touches the side of the frame, then uh, we have conflicting uh, uh, depth cues because uh, when it touches the frame, it gets cut off. And so uh, by occlusion, we consider it to be inside of the screen. However, uh, the parallax stereopsis, uh, since it has negative parallax, uh, we see it as being outside of the screen. And this uh, is a jarring uh, disruption of the uh, stereoscopic effect. And so objects with uh, negative parallax, uh, filmmakers tend to try to keep them uh, near the center of the screen. So in uh, summary, stereoscopic systems present a different image to each eye using parallax and occlusion revelation for depth perception. Uh, anaglyph uh, systems use colored filters with additive complement colors such as uh, red cyan. Uh, an object with negative parallax appears as if it's between the viewer and the screen, in other words, coming uh, at the audience. Uh, positive parallax is the opposite, is uh, something that appears to be inside the screen. Uh, convergence distance is the distance from the camera to the screen, or in other words, the distance uh, to uh, zero parallax. And the interaxial distance is the separation between the cameras and the greater the interaxial distance, the greater the stereoscopic effect.